Hey, today I thought about talking something about and uploading the serial port square wave generator. Uh, generally, square waves are going down, down to low frequency up to real high frequency. I don't know how accurate it is, but it does do the job. And I'm using a special uh, component in it. I'm actually using my library I made that was used for the for the counter, the LCD counter module that it did count by pulses. So instead of making a pulse, I'm turning it to directly. Instead of making a pulse, make it count. Instead of it's doing directly on and off, and it's doing it at a certain speed. Now speed is using a special timer that uh, that that what it does at the beginning of the program. It'll sample. The, it'll take a sample. How see how how high this number the number is or whatever it weights it as. For one second, and by that it can know how many, how many of, of them to do for each second. And we'll see that in the code real soon. But first, let's take a look at it. Well, here's what the program and it's why, why I chose to do a serial port instead of parallel port is because everyone that, that, that doesn't have a parallel port on the computer is too new. Serial port would be easy to get if you don't have a serial port on your, on your computer. It's because one thing, one thing you don't need, don't don't need to use input output addresses. So that means you don't have to worry about the privilege thing on your computer, preventing you from doing it. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not for sure for the one on the non-administrator board. I haven't tried it. I'm pretty sure it will run in a non-administrator mode. It just, I think it does. Yeah, you will be able to access serial port to it. As long as you, long as you run on anything, as long as you can access the serial port, and and be able to make pulses. Right now, it's set to one kilohertz or a thousand hertz. There's a there's a button there's a there's a text box that they enter your COM port number in. And you click start change and then you can need to change the the frequency down there after you get started. You can't change the port number though. You change frequency though. After you change the frequency. Yeah. After you change change frequency, you click the to have that button that you use to start it and it'll, it'll apply changes to the frequency on it. It's a very unique and good way. The timer is used on there is using some Windows multimedia library. I saw I was reading the source code one time and I noticed it was using Win mm.dll and I believe that's a, a multimedia one that, that does WAV files and all that stuff with multimedia stuff on the computer. And and I believe what it's doing is it, is it was trying to make, make like a like using this timer from it to make to keep, keep track of the time because I think yeah yeah in, in there there'll be there'll be less than a second less than one millisecond of time and sound and videos so yeah. I don't know how it does it. It does it somehow, because I had a source code and I was wondering how that how it got working with it. I was reading through it and then I no no says using something from WinMM that DLL, and that's kind of unusual because that's for sound and video. That's that's for like playing. That's for like playing sound or video. Make Windows programs play sound or video. Like wave files and stuff like that. But I guess it'll use in its timer. You made made up a timer so it can use it on it. This is on the Windows Vista also, so it works on the Vista. The Pi work on seven, or Pi work on eight, or Pi work on even on Windows ten. I believe so. As long as there's a serial port for it to access. Now, if you don't have a serial port. 
you can always buy a USB to set up, but I have one, had one, I had, and it works pretty well. The thing is, the voltage will be different. It'll be instead of it 12 volts, it'll be 5 volts. But usually that's not going to matter unless you know, unless you put stuff like you do running like chips and stuff, programming chips, that might be an issue. Do you do to put the program chips? That's usually when the serial port this voltage has to matter. Some of them they went off the, the your serial port voltage. And I got it right now I got it on there that's on the point five milliseconds, so that's like five hundred microseconds. It's on. And I said that's supposed to be at one kilohertz. I believe it is. It should should get it should get the uh, what you call it. My phone will be able to tell me. I don't know about the computer. You probably do the computer too, but I don't have no audio cord to whip up or something like that. So we'll have to deal with it just doing this way and guessing it's correct. If it's not, it's so useful because you can because you can quit oscillating signals that you might need unless like 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 if you're doing holiday lights, Christmas lights. If you want to flash them, you can flash them through your computer without having to buy some some components. All you just need is just a serial port cord, and there you go. And then you get a, one of those. This new thing I have a video of soon called Power Switch Tail Two. It's a little device that let you has a relay in it and it's and it let, lets you switch on and off the mains electricity do an opto coupler so it's kind of better than what I used to do with it it's safer also anyway enough about that let's change the frequency shall we let's see how well it does I have it at one kilohertz. I'm gonna at one kilohertz. I'm gonna try to turn it down, turn it up to double it. I'm gonna put two thousand hertz. See what happens. Looks like we did. I think we got. Let's see if we got double of the waveform. We have we have one, two, three, four, five. And how many did we have? A thousand? Let's see what we have. With a thousand. Two and a half? That's close. That is close to being double. As you can see there. If this is a thousand hertz, you know, you know, like two and a half cycles on, 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 this, on the screen. And you go to two thousand hertz and you get like five. That's double of two and a half, so there you go. It should be working. Now, let's try going down low. Let's try, uh, I don't know, can I do one hertz on that one? One hertz is kind of slow. We can do one hertz. Okay, so change this down to one. And change it. Now we just got going up and down on the oscilloscope. It's because I can't. No matter how far I change it, it's not gonna. It's not not gonna make no waveform. It's it's making a waveform. The thing is, the oscilloscope can't show it because it's doing it so slow. One hertz is kind of low. Let's try ten hertz. Trying 10 hertz. Ooh. Is it glitchy? There's 10 hertz for you. We that that's at uh, 
20 milliseconds range. Yeah, it will be higher time because it's going slower speed. I believe. Is that correct? I think so. Anyways, correct that it's going slower. Now you probably want to see the code for it. Okay. Hang on here. I'm going to show it to you. I have the source code on here, right here. Open up your notepad. How I'm going to do this. I'll just put the phone up to the screen right here. I wish I could. I might be able to do a video on here. Do I, can I make videos on it? Let's try, I'm going to check something here for a minute. Try Wonder Share. Hey, we put videos on here. Screen videos to see. Start up Wonder Share. Wonder Share is a it's a, it's a video editing tool and it's really good. I like it. Taking a while. I was wrong. Wonder Share doesn't have a have a screen recording tool. They aren't so I have to do it this way. I don't have no screen recording tool. I just loaded this computer not too long ago, and I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I reloaded it. Or well, day before yesterday, I think. So right here we got the square thread. One called this function here called the square thread. And what it does, if you scroll down here, last time is a variable, and last time what that does is it is it keeps that the the numbers the number of how much is weighted in. We'll just say it's weighted in as something. It's not seconds. It's probably not milliseconds. It's not microseconds. It's just a weighting, a number. I don't think it's in microseconds. I do believe it's. No, it ain't. If it was, it would be a big, huge number. Right there. And then, and then after that, we have while true. This does, does keeps it going. Keeps the thread going by having a while command on there. And I put if not. Time period, the new time period took away. Took away the last time. This is greater than it was a delay. That's because was it wait in seconds? Oh, it's, that is a delay. The delay value is special. I had to wait, think for a moment. And, and what this does is, it, is if it's squared in equal to delay, it, it, it will, uh, I believe it will, yeah, it will invert the, it will invert the B variable. What the B variable is ruling, that, that just t t tells the state of it, it's going to be on or off, or one or zero. I'll put it out through one of the pins that's doing it through. And it uses negative one and negative two in an increased count. Why are you putting negative numbers in it? It's so that it, it doesn't, doesn't count instead of it bypasses the count. This is using that counter library, the counter.dll file that, that's included with it. It's, it's a small library I wrote that, that lets you interface with serial ports and stuff. It was originally made for that counter I was talking about, the, the LCD one that, that uh, takes pulses and then 
signal pulse and it would it, it would count that. Then down here, that, that's where this thing here does. If if, if we then it does this here, then that's what the, those commands are talking about. It includes count. And it keeps on going like that. Now on your button, you click on it. Delay, you know, set the delay on there at the top. Is such a delay to uh, trunk trunk uh, time cal times times in parentheses one over str to float default in default float put value has one. If it fails, it, 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 it's, it's not going to cause the exception. So you can type in a wrong thing in there, it's not going to cause the exception. So what it's going to do is it's just going to default to 1. 1 hertz. And what this does is it takes time cal, which is your, which is top calibrated time, and times it by it. So it has to times it by that certain delay to that time. And what if it's weighted in? It's not weighted in anything, it's just a made up measurement. It's a made up measurement that, that, that the computer made up that, that goes along with this thing here. You just times it by seconds with the time calibration and you get that into it. And this here tells it if, if, the, if, if the H port, which H port is your handle, it's a handle to. Uh, it's just a made-up handle. It's not the actual handle to the serial port. It's actually a handle to the the handle to the to the counter library, counter library handle. That's what it is. And then down here it says it says s squared colon equal quit thread mail comma zero this this quick thread function is a windows api command that uh what it does is it goes into the net place the thread the thread is what it is it's just basically it's something that you want to you, know, you want to keep the process running but not haul, haul, hold it down for for wait on something it's like multitasking a thread will lie 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 do more than one thing at the same time when I was executing that thread, when I hog the process up and make it where it has to wait on it to finish, it'll do other stuff. And that's what makes it go fast. Allows you to change it. Without that, you wouldn't be able to change the time because it'll be terribly slow. And the form quake this does is it, uh, it calibrates the time. Time start and sleep one second, wait one second, and then after one second's up, it, it, it does a time calibration, set the time calibration variable to the time period property of our counter, not, not our counter, our uh, timer, our timer command, a timer tool that does, that, that does it down in microseconds. An application dot title that just sets, sets the title to something so it so does it so it's easier to find it if on, on the taskbar. And these here, these up here, right here, they, these just uh, this uh, this just kind of counter connect. That's the this tells the connect the serial port. That's the export function for it. It's in, it's imported into it. So it's free counter. What that does is it frees it. I don't think it uses that one, does it? No, it doesn't. The increase count is used to use you doing sending pulses out. So why is it called increase count? Is because it was originally made for a counter that went off the serial port to make it count. Of course, no one has it used my new library yet. I don't think. 
but it makes you know, it makes the job easy. The interface is serial port. I don't know why it's called counter. Why couldn't I call it serial I.O.? I don't know. I just made when I made that counter that time I usually called it serial I.O. or something like that. There you have it. The link will be on my website so you can download it and you can do all that. So thanks for watching. Hope you like it. I thought before we go, I thought I'd show you the show show you why we're on the on the Strayway sport about it. Anyway, we have here the serial port pin out. We're using pin five and seven. Five is ground and seven is request to send. Just those two wires out of the serial port, that's all you need. And so it's very easy to do. And here's what the signal will look like. You can minus 12 volts, 5 positive 12 volts, and the zero in the middle. Then it then it clicks the waveform and it goes up like that, and then it stays a little while, then oops, it goes down, and goes that way. And this is why I know it's good to use it, is it because it will send the signal out of both positive and negative. Both positive and negative square wave, where it comes out positive and negative. Not just positive and off, it comes out both. There you go. There you have it. A free, easy to make square wave generator. That's for the computer. It's better than sound cards. The sound cards have voltages not even there. The voltage is so low, it's like in millivolts. You have the one volt is max. With this here, it'll generate voltage like 12 volts or so, so it, so, so it can be useful in many different ways. You need to avoid not the right kind of voltage you need, you put a push pull on it or something like that and you can make it that voltage you need. So there you have it. That would be in George's videos. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it.